Obviously, many people have watched your documentary, and me personally, it really kind of marked me. I mean, I um, started a movement in the Montreal area where we took over a GMO corn and soya field and turned it into a sustainability learning center. We're basically building a school for children and, and for, for basically the world at large. Here's the thing, though. With the oceans, people don't know about the problem to begin with, right? They don't know about the statistic about 2048 that we might no, no longer have fish in the sea. What can people do tangibly on the ground to be able to deal with the oceans? What can people do to, to kind of take care of the oceans? I think the first and most important thing that people need to do is get up to speed with knowing the knowledge is there. Everyone can tune in to the knowledge that we have. We've learned more about the ocean since I began diving in the 1950s than during all preceding human history put together. At the same time, we've lost more. People need to know that half the coral reefs have disappeared or are in a state of sharp decline. And the kelp forests and the seagrass meadows, the forests on the land, the mangroves that border tropical shores. We've never witnessed in all of human history a time of greater loss than what I personally have witnessed and those who have lived in the last few decades. Children can see it happening before their very eyes. They can hear stories about how things were when their parents were kids. Why aren't the skies filled with birds? Why isn't the ocean as rich with marine life? Whether it's fish or squid or, or whatever it is, they have been greatly depleted. Now we know, at least it's known, <laughs> So if you don't know, you know, listen up. Realize that when you breathe, you're breathing the ocean. When water falls out of the sky, the ocean is touching you. If you've never seen the ocean, if you have never touched the ocean, you can feel it all around you. The Earth is an ocean planet that no ocean, no life, no blue, no green. And that knowledge has largely come to pass at the same time. Learning more, losing more. It's like a race. And here we are, early in the 21st century, with a capacity as never before, and maybe as never again, to make a difference. With 10% of the fish left in the ocean on a scale that was, you know, what was there when I began exploring, for the big fish anyway, the tunas, the sharks, the, the swordfish, the cod, the halibut, their populations have, have really been driven down to a historically low level. But the good news is, there are still cod in the ocean. There are a few halibut. There's some oysters left in Chesapeake Bay. Not many, but there are a few. They're not all gone. We have the power of restraint. We have the power to restore. We could, if we want to, continue what we've been doing until all of the oysters and the cod and the swordfish and the tuna, the trees, the living world, is consumed for short-term use and long-term loss. We can't afford to lose any more of the natural world. This is that pivotal moment when, from this point onward, we have the opportunity to turn from the, the decline into recovery. And everyone should be rejoicing. You can be a part of history. The most important part of time ever to be around is now. So use your power, whoever you are, whatever you do. If you have a way with numbers, use numbers. If you have a voice to sing, then sing. If you take pictures, take them as an artist. If you're a child or a grown, it doesn't matter who you are. You have the power to make a difference in a positive way. Or you can just be indifferent. That's using your power in a negative way to do nothing. So, you know, if you could be born anywhere in time, Jackson Brown sings, now is the time. This is the moment. So, get busy. Go for it.